Welcome back to 8701. So now, um, after we introduced um, the week interaction um, and the Feynman rules for week interaction, we can now look at decays of muons and in this case, the decay of a pion. The decay of the pion is specifically interesting. And we discussed the decay of the pion before when it came to the discussion of felicity states. Now let's look at this again with the information we have and what we learned. Now, if you look at the pion decay, um, the two leading, um, two or three leading decay modes are given here. The one is where the pion, in this case, a negatively charged pion decays into an anti-electron neutrino and an electron, or via the W in a muon and an anti-muon neutrino. Um, if you look at this in the rest frame of the pion, um, we can see that the neutrino and the lepton, charged lepton, are produced back to back. Now the spin of the pion is zero, which means that the out in opposite direction outgoing leptons have to have the same velocity states. Since the neutrino is massless, the antineutrino is massless, the antineutrino is produced right-handed. It's always right-handed. The carrier state of the neutrino and the helicity state of the neutrino are essentially the same because they're massless meaning the projection of the spinor um, is basically the same as the projection of the spin in, in, um, on the momentum direction. All right, but the charged lepton is massive. If the charged lepton would be massless, um, the decay would not be allowed. There would not be a right-handed helicity state for um, a charged lepton. Now, this causes quite some confusion and I've, I've seen uh, even in this course, some students being confused by this. Um, I can write the, um, let's say, right-handed charge lepton um, and decompose this as right-handed helicity state. So this is, let's say, the right-handed helicity state. And I can decompose this through the chiral states, the right-handed and the left, uh, left-handed. And we have seen in previous in the previous lectures that only the left-handed component participates. Now, you can also see from this equation here that if the momentum and energy would be the same as that it's the case for massless particle, this would be zero, this would be one, this would be one, and therefore this right-handed helicity state would be the same as the as the uh, chiral state, and it wouldn't be coupling to the weak interaction. Well, let's erase this really quickly because we want to actually look at this decay. And so now we have all the tools to get almost all the tools together to calculate this, um, um, the decay rates or the ratio of decay rates. And you want to do this in the pi and rest frame. So the momenta are given, the momenta are given here. You see that the pi momentum is zero. And for momentum, the energy is equal to the mass. Uh, for the uh, charged lepton and for the neutrino, you just produce them in opposite direction. So neutrino in this case falls into negative d direction. And we can write the leptonic current as we have just seen in the previous lecture. You see this one minus gamma five term here. Um, good, and I could have just called this left-handed left here and put this into the definition of the spinner. Fine. When we put a real spinor, this comes out immediately direct when immediately we have to keep this in, in mind. The matrix element then is a little bit more complicated. And here's an additional, so you see the, the current here again, you see the um, propagator and I uh, went into the low energy approximation here. You see that instead of having a Q, Q square minus M square, I'm just keeping the M square component of this. And then I have this case part here for the current, for the pion current here. And I simply parameterize my missing understanding or missing ability to calculate non perturbative QCD with the form factor. So I introduce this form factor for a pion. This is not the important part of the discussion. We just keep track of this here. All right, and we can calculate this matrix element fine. We then have to be explicit about the spinors we are using and we use the momentum as defined as above. So this step here, I'm not doing explicitly. If you want, you can go to Thompson, Thompson and read in chapter 11. Uh, he gives uh, quite some detail on this. 
All right, um, so moving on, um, there's one extra thing when we try to calculate the spin average uh, matrix element, um, we find that we don't have to do any work because there's a spin zero state, there's only one state contributing. So we you know, don't have to do any work, we just have to square the matrix element. We find this as a solution here and there's an additional factor we haven't introduced yet. This is the Fermi coupling. Again, this is, um, uh, comes out in, in the low energy um, approximation uh, and G Fermi is simply defined over um, the coupling to the W over the W mass squared as shown here. All right, again, this is just a factor which is not relevant to the discussion at this point, um, but we can then using um, Fermi's golden rule calculate the partial decay width of the uh, uh, pion decay. Okay, so we just put in the matrix element here. Um, we replace the momentum with the energy um, being equal uh, to the mass of the pion and voila, we get this as an answer for the partial decay width. Okay, if you now want to know some experimental information like the partial decay width of the pion, charged pion to electrons over the muon, we want to know what this factor is, we immediately can do this. We don't need to know any of the details as G Fermi, as a structure function of the pion, all of those factors cancel out and what is left here are um, the parameters of the electron mass, the muon mass and the pion mass. And if you just use values like this, the mass of the muon equal to 105 MeV and the mass of the pion equal to 140 MeV, you find 10 to the minus four as <coughs> values, uh, as a value for this ratio of partial decay. And you see where this comes from. This basically comes from the fact that the uh, electron mass is much, much smaller than the mass of the muon. And factually, you can explain this by the fact that a right-handed helicity state for a muon can have a much larger contribution of the left-handed chiral state of a muon, while this is not possible, or while this component is much smaller for the lighter electron. And again, only the left-handed component, component of the charged leptons of the charged lepton contributes to the weak interaction. 